Vast expanses of ancient boreal forest cradle the Earth's secrets. Dark waters reflect the timeless tales of this untamed land. Weathered granite whispers secrets from eons past. A journey for the spirit and a sanctuary for the soul. This is the Misanabe. Good morning, day four on the Misanabe. Just uh, checking out the Portage Trail here. Today we have a quiet day. We're only paddling about seven or eight kilometers to the next campsite, next set of falls, and it's gonna be a play day. So we're literally gonna set up camp and uh, go out in the canoes, try some funky stuff, maybe take some dips on purpose just to, uh, well, get used to being in the water, try some maneuvers and have some fun. So I'll check back in when we're there. We just left our campsite and we're at Swamp Rapids and uh, just did a quick set of uh, swifts and now we're headed into about a kilometer of rapids, unnamed rapids, so hopefully nothing too crazy. I'm in the stern today, Riley's in the bow and she's gonna keep me safe. And that's it. All right, let's go out some fun. This fast run ended with Rob and Deb's canoe essentially being our brakes. Thankfully, they were good sports about it and carried on. You okay? Alright, well, take a beating. Yeah, she had to change it from an eddy to a hard back paddle. Yeah. But because we put it in the sink. Like, it's good. Get, get ready to hop. Get ready to hop. That was perfect. No, no, it was still fine. It Great. didn't do any damage. No, no damage, no foul. No. And I mean a little damage, no foul. Fear from it. After that first bump, things picked up a little. Left. Finally, we were faced with a different sort of challenge, a log jam. So we thought we were at log jam, but we're actually at a pre-log jam. Dan is jigging his canoe over this log. Here's a giant log jam. We sent our canoe down there. I'm just making my way back to that canoe. And then we have what's actually called log jam down there with a proper portage around it. So. Managing the mix of floating logs and debris wasn't without its risks. One wrong step and we could find ourselves plunging beneath it all. But with a careful approach, we managed to get ourselves and our boats through in decent time. Hook his boat. His. Just use your the far one? Yeah. yeah, just pull it forward a bit. As much as you can. Go ahead, that's too. enough, that's enough. Oh, oh you're just going around that. Okay. Whatever it was on so I can pull it back here. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Both feet. Spider walk. All the way. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. In. 
Okay. You want me to hold you? Yeah. I can cast you off. You might have to cast me off. And when we get down to Allen, will your drone fly all the way back? Yeah. About 400 meters. We're free. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's back up. Yep. I do love a good Kia. Yeah. He's just chilling up by. Okay, I need to dunk my leg in water and get all the debris and the spiders off of it. What do you need, Dan? Nothing. Just do you need a hand? Nope. No, he's... Just need to recut. So we took the river down on the side of the log jam and then hiked back up on the portage to check out Allen Falls. Not as big as we expected, but still cool to go check it out. We've arrived at Wavy Rapids. Um, some of the more experienced paddlers are going to give it a shot. I am definitely not yet. I might run it with other gear in the boat. I think that's what Riley is planning as well. Um, let me give you a shot of the rapid. It's pretty gnarly. All right, top of the rapid. We left our boats up there. We kind of just scooched along all these rocks to scout it out. It looks like a decent line. But you've got a giant rooster tail right here and some pretty uh, pretty big wave train heading out of it. I think the plan is come off the right of the rooster tail and then try to get out here. There's the wave train at the bottom, then you've got this nice rock garden here, and then whoop, there's Lyra. Such a good dog, being very patient, waiting for us to figure out our plan, hanging out on a rock in the middle of nowhere. And we're just waiting for the others to get ready. They just tried crossing that giant wave train. The poor little things. With the plan being to spend the rest of the day playing in Wave Rapids, Dan was the first to run the set. Next, it was Rob and Deb's turn. And finally, it was time for Riley and I to give it a go.
And here's that same run from a different angle. It seems so obvious now, but at the time I definitely didn't paddle hard enough. And here's our second run. This is Riley and I again. We actually sank because we took on so much water, but otherwise we were pretty much upright throughout the entire wave train. Forward! Stop! And this was my last attempt at waving rapids, and I'm proud to say I'm the only one who sank Dan on the entire trip. Turn right! Than I do. Like a lot longer. I thought you were trying to flip it back. So I, I was. Figured, well, I figured I'd stay and try and help. Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. I was Woo. ready to bail, and then I'm like, why are we not upside down? <laughs> so then I was like, okay. Because Dan's got a ridiculous, ridiculous brain. I'm good. It's almost the end of day four. Uh, didn't have far to travel today. I think it was about nine kilometers down river. Uh, seven or nine, and uh, we're staying right beside Wavy Falls, or Wavy Rapids, rather. Uh, the rapids that got the best of me. I ran them three times, and swamped the first time, almost made it through both other times, but actually swamped right at the end just from taking on so much water. Uh, it was still fun to run, so I had fun. Um, tomorrow we have some distance to make up, so I think we'll be up early. We might try to go from wavy where we are today all the way up to the Brunswick Lake uh, portage but we're not sure if we'll make it that far. from Wavy Rapids. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Good morning, day five on the Missinabi. Uh, we just left Wavy Rapids and we're headed up river. I'm in the boat with Riley and Deb, Rob and Dan are coming up. They just took a break. Take a look at what's ahead of us. Big rapids of the day, we've arrived at Green Hill and uh, according to Hap Wilson's book, the first section of the rapids is class three, best aligned on the right side. And then the lower rapids go down to class two and then the class one at the very end. I'll give you guys a quick look to see, uh, so you guys can see what it looks like. Here's where we came from.
lot of fairly old growth cedar along this river, but check out this one. It's huge. All of our scrapes nice still holding we so, came over a ledge <laughs> yeah so did we not here we sort of pissed a lot there was those three big guys yeah we hit one the last one pissed, yeah we made love too oh okay yeah. Yeah. so I was like, here left, left. we're not going left so here this uh Thank look you. around Dream. i'm gonna ferry over to that eddy yeah and then back yeah you're gonna cut over to it yeah, yeah. all right great paddle hard There, you held it. A little quicker on the fry call or the, the left turn call there, Riley. Yeah, with me. I'm all you. That was beautiful. Campsite at the top of the next one. Okay. Portage came out over there, or we go to the next rapids. The next rapids is the campsite. Okay. Done. Yeah. Works for me. Well done, everybody. Good yeah. job. Loads yeah. of rocks to avoid. That's a victory. <laughs> Wait. So we just ran the very long calf rapids. They weren't too crazy. Some, I guess, technical class ones uh, spread out over a fair distance. 
We're breaking right now at St. Peter Rapids for lunch. We're on the portage. We've set up the no bug zone so that we could be out of the bugs. The worst are the horse flies and the black flies and the deer flies. They're all brutal. Uh, after that, I'm not sure what the decision is. We might run St. Peter's Rapids or line it part of the way down. And then after that, uh, I think it's fairly calm waters for the rest of the day until our probably near the end of the day at least. Um, it is freaking hot. It's like 26, 27 degrees and then there's a bit of humidity as well. In some of the uh, turn, twists and turns in the river, there's absolutely no wind, so if it's like sweltering hot. So we keep taping, dip, taking dips in the water, it feels good. We just did the portage at Split Rock. Um, the 350 meters. That behind me is what you're avoiding. Let me show you. We've arrived at Thunder Falls. It's getting late in the day because we've pushed to make mileage. This is definitely not runnable. Thunder Falls is over there. And check out the size of that log jam. That is stacked up easily two stories, maybe even two and a half stories high. It's insane. Um, basically shoves all the water down there. So we're uh, starting the portage right now. And um, the campsite right here with the portage, which we were going to stay in until we discovered a much nicer campsite on the other end of the portage, which means we don't have to do the portage first thing tomorrow. So that's the plan. This was the hardest wild strawberry I've ever picked for some reason. I'll blame it on dehydration and fatigue. Coming down the far end of the Thunder Falls portage, pretty decent portage. Check this out though, once you get to the other end. It is like the driftwood flea market. It's just full of different driftwood. I got big ones, little ones, medium ones. I got wide ones, tiny ones, long ones, thin ones. What you like, what you like. Let me know, let me know. Make a bid, make a bid. Look at these ones. Oh, look at this one. It's like a giant Gandalf staff. Cool. All right, here we are, and we're going straight across. Right over there to the other campsite. Thunder Falls, absolutely beautiful. This is the other side of it. We're down river, obviously. And then the log jam on the other side was way over here. And that's pretty much how high it was. It's crazy. Check out this beauty campsite at the base of uh, Thunder Falls. 
huge private beach and awesome campsite up there in the woods. Exhausted from a 30 kilometer day, we hastily set up our tents, ate dinner, and hit the sack. The soothing symphony of thunder falls quickly lulling us to sleep. Good morning, day six on the beautiful Missinabe River. This morning we are at the base of Thunder Falls, that's where we spent the night. The plan going forward, uh, head down river today, make some mileage. We opted last night not to do the portage over to Brunswick Lake, so we're just sticking to the river. And uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of features we have today. It was another sweltering day, so come lunchtime, and with the absence of any good sights along shore, we opted for a boat lunch in a shady spot along the riverbank. Unfortunately, our first stop was interrupted by the presence of... Check out the size of the spider. There's my hand for reference. Yeah, so we quickly moved on. Oh, hairy beast, it's so gross. And of course, after seeing that spider, it's all we talked about for the next while. Infected with bacteria, and um, Dan, you might be in charge of hooking us up here. A woman I canoed with for a while. Just fling a rope over it and let's hang it. I don't deal with big spiders over water. Little guys, the little grassy ones that hang out in the grass, they're, uh, they're icky, but whatever. I'll just pick them up and throw them out. Yeah. I won't squish them. But dog spiders. Ugh. <laughs> End of day six, we stopped at First Lake Rapids. There's a campsite on an island in the middle of the river. We're supposed to come in on the right-hand side. That's where the portage is, and that's where the sign is for the campsite, but it wasn't really doable, so we ran the rapids down the other side, came around, came up the backside of the, uh, the rocky island here. We've got a really nice campsite. I'll show you that. We do have a storm rolling in right now. We heard some loud thunder. It seems to have tapered off a little bit, but you can see the clouds kind of all over the place and behind here. As we were coming up on our campsite earlier, right around that point there, maybe a little bit before, saw a moose, cow moose with her calf on the side. Uh, they ran into the bush as soon as they saw us. And then as we rounded this corner, saw another cow moose with her calf crossing the river. I tried to get some footage. I don't know if it'll turn out, but it was a pretty cool day. And now we're gonna go make some non pizza for dinner. It's gonna be good. But first, we had to set up our tents and the no bug zone. Dinner tonight is pizza on non bread. Looks delicious. Better over a campfire. Yeah. It's a little bit better when it's done over a campfire, but with a fire ban, this is what you have to do. Sure and Deb is mending stuff and Dan is still. <laughs> what are you doing, Dan? Rehydrating. Still trying to rehydrate the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It'll it be there. Came out a little leathery. Yep. Uh, no, it, it does the heat to maximum saturate. Inside the tent right now. For the last two days, this is what we've had. We went from <clears throat> mosquitoes, black flies, to a few of those with lots of deer flies and horse flies to these like weird just house flies they just buzz around like crazy but they don't sting you so but gross here ends day six on the mighty misanabe part two of my series stay tuned for some additional footage of the incredible thunder falls if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button subscribe and stay tuned for part three coming soon thanks for watching everyone